Elijah has one of the briefest introductions in the Bible. We know nothing of his birth. He suddenly appears before Ahab and announces himself as someone who stands before God. It's quite a vivid phrase. He stands before God. We read of a few people who have encounters with God in the Bible, but standing before him isn't characteristic of those meetings. We read of Ezekiel. He, he saw the heavens opened. He saw vision was God and he fell on his face. We see that Joshua sees the angel of the Lord and he falls on his face. We see that John on Patmos gets a vision of heaven and of Jesus and he falls as one dead. Paul on the road to Damascus, suddenly the heavens are open, the light shines upon him, he falls, they all fell to the ground. The extraordinary thing is this, that these encounters that kind of take people's breath away, they see God, they feel like they're finished, they're on their faces, and the word that comes to them again and again, the word that comes to Ezekiel, arise, stand on your feet. The word that comes to the Apostle Paul, arise, stand on your feet. God's able to put us on our feet again. It's wonderful. When, when we're baptised, you know, we're, we're poured backwards into the water and then we are put back on our feet again. That phenomenal grace that, yeah, we acknowledge we're not worthy. We acknowledge, hey, I'm as good as dead. You might as well bury me. And, and we identify with Christ and his death. We, we go down under and then we're put back on our feet again. It says in Romans chapter 5, being justified by faith, we have peace with God and we have access to this grace in which we stand. The only way Elijah can stand before God is that he has received grace. He's not a superman, he's a man just like us, but he has met with God and found grace from God to stand. Beloved, if you are a believer, God invites you to stand in grace. Yeah, be baptised. Let your feet come off the ground. Then let him put you back on your feet again. I love the story of Simon Peter who, yeah, when it came to the push, when it came to a real challenge, he denied it even knew Jesus. I don't know him, I'm not with him. Although God had warned him, Jesus had said before the cock crows, and he said, no, no, I'll be okay. I'll... No, no, he denied him. He was a total wreck. And then Jesus came to him. Do you love me, Peter? Do you love me, Peter? He's a wonderful saviour. He wants us to stand. Yeah, it's important we know our brokenness, but he wants to put us on our feet again. The most wonderful statement on the day of Pentecost, this wonderful phrase, it says, Peter standing with the eleven. I think if I was Peter, I'd think, well, thank you for forgiveness, Lord. I'll just retire to the back of the crowd. I've obviously lost my place. James, go on, preach it. Go on, James. No, no, on the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven. He's back on his feet. He's there by the grace of God, like all of us. It's the only way we can stand before God, that he's shown us mercy and grace and put us on our feet. Let's take full advantage of it. Let's stand in this grace. Let's give our lives wholly to a God who's willing to restore, willing to put us on our feet in his presence.